Okay. Let, let, me, let me just start again, like I said. Um, you know, when you were a basically uh, a KISS fan as a kid, um, and you had your dad rip up your poster, yeah. I mean, was that something that obviously got you on your rock and roll journey as a kid? I, I, of, of course, you know. It's like, you know, one thing as a kid, you the first thing you have, what you have to do is basically rebel against your parents. Yeah. You know? And, um, but it wasn't, wasn't just rebelling against, obviously, against my stepfather in this case. It was more about the society because, like, in East Germany, kids were totally forbidden. Right. Uh, because they thought of the FS room, you know, and they were kind of for kind of a Nazi banner or something. Yeah. Which is totally ridiculous, obviously. But, like, this time, I remember there was always this big comparison between kids and ACDC. So kids were the bad guys and ACDC were the good guys. Right. Yeah, or what the fuck they were talking about. Right. But I think most likely there was one part of my uh, uh, path into rock music, but like, like I don't know, like, and I'm, I'm telling the stories often, but one of the things that got me started basically was, you know, it was, it was kind of a punishment, like in my, uh, it was my parents basically, they put me in a room for, for two weeks. No. I did anything bad, and I had this ACDC tape, like a live tape. Yeah. And this, this table gave me kind of the freedom to escape for some reason. Yeah. So I was listening to this tape so many, many, many times. Yeah. Uh, that was something that I, I kind of felt a bridge to the outside. To right. Um, well, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, I, I, I was, you know, I don't, I'm sure you saw the video, uh, Twisted Sisters, we're not going to take it. Like, that's what started me off. All right. So I'm sure there's a lot of analogies that you can, <laughs> everyone can relate to. Of course, of course. I mean, like, in, you know, basically growing up in East Germany with the system. Yeah. Uh, that was, that was a unique situation. Well, 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 for, like, I just got the new ACDC plug me in, and, you know, there's that one concert where they did in 91, um, I guess I guess in Moscow, where when the wall came down, like there's hundreds, probably thousands of kids out there just like rocking out to live ACDC. It must have been like the coming of Jesus Christ for them or something. You know what I mean? Uh, something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Oh, I, I, I must admit, like I have never have seen a uh, uh, Bon Scott live. There was something that I, I missed my life, and like yeah. I, I think like he's one of the uh, to me he's one of the best rock and roll singer ever. Yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you don't have the, the 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 box set, get it. It's an amazing like it, yeah? rare footage of Bon Scott. They have three videos of them starting out as in high school. I mean, it's amazing. Okay, what what's the name of it? It's it just came out. It's ACDC Plug Me In. It's a three box set. All right. Uh, okay. Three DVDs. It's amazing. All right. Cool. If, if you love Bon Scott, like, I was just blown away. With, and they, there's like three different interviews of Bon Scott. Oh wow. It's awesome. Oh. I have to get it. Just from 76 on, you know, it's awesome. Cool. cool. Um, anyway, going on with other questions here. Uh, now, you know, I was reading on your Wikipedia uh, on how, you know, you, you tried to sell a guitar as a kid, went in che Czechoslovakia, came back. Yeah. You started playing a guitar from a girl. She got excited. Yeah. Um, when you strummed harder. Is that what got you kind of more into the hard rock side of music? I think that yeah, I mean like I was I was grew up with kind of hard rock, uh, yeah. like all those like like as I said, A C D C, Led Zeppelin, yeah, uh, Black Sabbath, all those kind of music. That was like that was the start. But I also always liked the other side. You know, I was like also like the the, the you know in in fact, when I think about those times, I always liked all the good songs. It doesn't matter where it came from, even when I pop yeah. I remember that I like Depeche Mode, you know, and I was, yeah. well, they have great melodies. And I guess, like, there was something I was always trying to do to combine those worlds. Yeah. Because, like, obviously, like, you know, when the metal stuff came on, to me, it was just, like, it was really, it was great because it was really hard, it was aggressive. Yeah. But I missed the melodies. I missed their sentimental touch or something. I don't know yeah. what it was. Yeah. So, but I grew up with, with definitely with the, those kind of bands after... And then I felt, I kind of like went into punk. Yeah, I was just going to ask about that. Yeah, because like in East Germany, yeah. it was just, sorry, one second. No worries, no worries. Oh. I see, I'm in the gym right now, can you come back in 50 minutes? Thank you. 
Was FedEx. FedEx. Sure, it's not an encyclopedia salesperson. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm basically in East Germany. There were, there were like you know, there were the only way to make music was basically you know to go on the ground. Yeah. And and there were only those punk bands, and because obviously in the beginning you can't really play an instrument. Yeah. You have this whole whole fucking aggression in. Yeah. Itself. and so I grew up with those kind of music and not listen to more the English kind of punk yeah. I must say um, and uh, yeah I mean then after punk you know I went back to metal and then I actually started to listen to all those crazy bands like the first industrial band I remember for me was uh, Big Black right? and and like Steve Albini you know for example like you know it was like for me the, the first record I heard I was like, oh, like blown away or like Swan for example mm -hmm. that was in New York here and yeah. it was like all those dark bands, and I got really into the dark side of the of the music. Right. And I kind of stayed with this actually. <laughs> well, th the thing is, uh, you you just answered my next question when you ta started talking about the punk way of life in East Germany. Um, obviously, like 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 I was kind of like more attracted, uh, obviously, to, to the punk side, you know, because more of the D do-it-yourself type of attitude. Yeah. Obviously, you don't have where you can just go to the local record short store and buy whatever records you have. I mean, there must have been a, a huge underground scene in, in, in a place like East Germany. And I guess of all the types of music out there to, to, that thrive was, was punk music, I, I would imagine. Punk, so what punk, and it, like, because, like, you know, that was, like, kind of the easiest, uh, uh, the easiest musical form to express yourself, basically. You know? Yeah. So if you had anger or you had, like, you know, you could, like, you know, you, you didn't have to be, like, a, a, a great musician to express yourself in music. Yeah. But punk was excellent to this kind of ways, you know? Yeah. It was, it was great. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and, and, and as I said, like, you know, in, in East Germany, you couldn't really buy records, you know? There was yeah. everything that you heard it was kind of a limitation in, yeah. and, 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 and records. So I remember that... Um, my first record I bought was actually in, in Hungary, and it cost me like 100 uh, mark, which was basically double half the money you got like for a month. Yeah. I bought my first record was like the Dead Kennedys. Yeah. That was my first record I bought. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I mean now, I, I mean, I go back on my history with I've done two interviews with Jello Biafra 